Hey, this is Jason from New Horizons, and I'm going to walk you through Mutual of Omaha's electronic application for MedSubs. So first things first, let's uh, get to the app, and to do that, we'll go to Mutual of Omaha's homepage at mutualofomaha.com, and in the upper left, you'll see individual customers. You can change that to sales professionals. Um, I believe you can log in right here, but you can also click Agents and Brokers, and then click Sign In. Or if you just want a shortcut, change this to www8 at mutualofomaha.com and bookmark that page. Okay, so if you have an account, sign in here, otherwise you'll have to sign up down here. Now, once you are logged in, you can either scroll down to the bottom and there's a block of info about the MedSup eApp. And one of the really nice things about Mutual of Omaha's eApp is that they have what they call a sandbox environment. And that's just kind of a testing area or a playground, if you will, where you can try out the eApp without worrying about submitting actual business. To get to that, we'll actually go to Sales Tools. And under the Medicare Supplement heading, we're going to choose Resources. Okay, so here's everything eApp related. So they have a quick start guide, uh, PowerPoint presentation, a training manual, um, and some reasons if you're not sold on why you should be using eApps. But the main one we want to be aware of is up here, Sandbox MedSup eApp. And as it says, it's just for play. You can test it out and see how this thing works. And that's what we're going to use today. So I'm going to click that. It opens up a new tab. And it's going to show any previous tests you have done. And I just did one earlier. Also notice up at the top, it's always going to tell you this is just a, a testing environment. But if this were a real eApp, it would look exactly like this. So what we would do is click on start a new quote or application. And a couple things to note here, you have the option of quoting a couple, um, like a husband and wife, or um, if you do that, it just changes to applicant A and applicant B. We're just gonna do a single person at this time. So we'll put in their info. And something to note on Mutual's eApp, there are three signature methods. There are, you know, you can print it for a wet signature. You can electronically sign it or do a voice signature. Now, this doesn't require an email address. It does require internet access, so it's pretty rare that someone's going to have internet access, but but they won't have an email address. So if you can get an email address from your client, then it's going to be easiest if, if they have that. There is another way to do it, but uh, in this example, I'm going to walk you through how it would work if they don't have email, but they do have internet access. I know that's not a likely scenario, but just to show you that it can be done. Okay, so we're gonna skip the email address. We'll put in date of birth. And we're gonna make the effective date May 1st. Okay, this is for the household discount. We're going to say no. We're gonna say it's not open enrollment and not GI. And throughout the system, some of, sometimes there are little notes that pop up, so just things to be aware of. We're going to say this is a male, non-tobacco, he's, uh, let's say, 5'10", 190. Okay, so the first part of this is getting a quote. We're going to choose Plan F, and you'll notice the button didn't appear until we chose a plan. But so now we can apply and then we see the app. 
And as we move through the app, these will change to green check marks or they'll indicate that something's missing. Okay, so we're going to say power of attorney no. And notice that anything we've already filled out is pre filled. So we did this on the quote screen, therefore, we don't have to fill it in again. And we'll say the mailing address is the same as the home address. We're going to skip the email address. And if you want online paperless EOB mailed out, they do have to have an email address. So we're going to say no. And same thing for the temporary ID card. If they want a temporary card, they do need email. So we'll just say no. Then we click next. And notice we now have a green check mark for page one. Okay, so social, we'll fill that in. And we'll say the effective date is May 1st. Change that to uh, 2012. Same for Medicare Part B. And these were asked previously, so we're, they're pre-filled to no. Say I did not turn 65 in the last six months. And next. Okay, on, a, on the first screen we chose no household discount, so we're going to stick with that here. And again, notice the green check marks. And on to the health questions. We'll go through choosing no, and if your client answers yes, it's going to notify us that they do not qualify for coverage. Okay, so we'll choose no on these. And as we move down, some of these, if we choose, they may not qualify for coverage. So these are not knockout questions, but they warrant further explanation. And one thing I didn't point out is on the very last screen, there's a notes to underwriting field. So right here. So if any of these are answered yes, you'll have to add an explanation. Okay, prescription drugs. You have to answer this question yes or no. If it's no, we can move on. If they have taken some medications, then we'll choose add. And we're going to add every medication. To do this, you have to type in at least three letters of the medication name. So I'll type in S, I, M. Choose Simvastatin. Click next. Then we choose the dosage. We'll say over two years, and yes, it's prescribed by the primary physician. Okay, so just repeat this for every medication they take, and then click Next. Now we get to payment information. And this kind of depends on what your signature method will be. Um, we're not going to print it for a wet signature. You have the option of letting your applicant provide payment info during the signature. But that will affect whether you can do a voice signature or an e-signature. So it puts in the premium. We're going to choose automatic bank withdrawal for both initial payment and renewal. And this is the same as the applicant. It's a checking account. And we're going to put in a routing number. And as soon as we get out of that field, it looks it up to verify it. And we can either withdraw on the 1st or the 15th. And we'll just say the 1st. All right, next. And since we were replacing this policy, it's asking for more information about that. Let's say we don't know that. We could put unknown. Um, we'll say blue cross. And we'll say it expires on April 30th. OK, so for this. The policy checklist, you'll have to choose what the existing coverage, the, the plan they're on. So we're replacing an F plan. 
and next. Okay, if you've sold any other policies, be sure to fill this out. We're going to have the policy sent to us and verify these questions. And then the very last screen, if they had any issues, we're done with the app. Next step is to hit continue. We have all green check marks. If anything was wrong, this would show a different icon alerting you that we need more information. So continue to review. And it's looking up the eligibility info on the Medicare website. And since it's unable to validate, that's okay. We're just going to click continue. Okay, so now we have a review. It just lists out all the info we've already added. So review that. And at the very bottom, You'll need to make sure your client has all these documents. And then we'll submit. Now, this is important. We see an authorization number here. This is what your client will need if they don't have an email address. So let's say they want to e-sign just by going to their web browser. They can go to signyourmedsupapp.com and enter this number. They'll just enter their, this number and their birth date, and that allows them to sign. Or they can call this number and enter the authorization number. So I'm going to copy this and show you the process they would go through. So you, you could email your client or tell them over the phone go to this website, signyourmedsupapp.com and they would have to enter the authorization number and what do we use for a birth date? Okay, once they put that in they look at the terms and conditions they have to agree And then they have the option to download the outline of coverage, the application, all of that, verify the premium, and then they will have to mark that they've read these documents, they're signing in your city and state, and then by clicking this, they're signing the document. Now I'm guessing for most of your apps, you're probably going to use the e-signature or the uh, I'm sorry, the voice signature, and that's just going to be a phone call, um, verifying the same information. But once I submit the e-signature, I get a thank you screen and it, one one last opportunity to download all these all these documents. So if I'm the applicant, I could click on a review app, and that's going to open a PDF of the application. Okay, so all the information is there. They can keep this for their records. The last thing they would do would be log out and they're done. Then you as the agent, you can always check your dashboard to see what the status is. So we see John Doe has submitted an e-signature. So now we're just waiting on approval. So that's all there is to it. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. And again, thanks for watching.